This is Why So Weekend. I'm Ryan Warner. Once a month on the program, we've been teaming up with the Dayton Business Journal to look at modern-day inventors. In a year when we'll be celebrating the Wright brothers, who are the folks coming up with the new ideas of tomorrow? It's a segment we call Innovation Now. This morning, how does an inventor think? What goes on in their minds? And is a tinkerer born or bred? Local inventor Stephen Fry agreed to let us look inside his head for a while. Fry, who lives in Riverside, has a long list of inventions and inventions that have sold on the market as well. Everything from a talking telephone ringer to an integrated circuit for a handicapped accessible computer mouse. I asked Fry when he caught the inventing bug. I think it probably started um, about fifth grade, probably, the time of the Mercury flights and the Gemini flights. And I got real interested in rocket science and went into the school library and started reading a whole lot of books on, you know, everything they had in the school library on technical stuff. You know, necessity is the mother of invention, as they say. And I wonder if you find that that is the process as you've invented things, sort of identifying something that needs to be fixed. There's probably several different, different. Uh, that's, that's the main one. That's the one that happens most often. And I've got plenty of examples of that. I mean, I could just go on for hours on, you know, da 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 and that caused me to think of this and solve this problem. But sometimes it comes about a little bit differently. Um, sometimes you see a phenomena. Like one example of that is um, I went for a trip out west with my parents in 75. And uh, we went out to the Canadian Rockies, Yellowstone, a uh, whole lot of places out there. And on the way back, we were coming back across South Dakota. And you look around in the sky, and it's nothing but blue sky from horizon to horizon out there in the flat part of the state. I noticed that one part of the sky was dark, and one part of the sky was light. Well, I had polarizing sunglasses on. So you realize, hey, there's something about the sky here. It's polarized. And then I took the sunglasses off and wiggled them a little bit and realized, hey, if I line this thing up, the sunglasses are dark when they're at right angles to the direction of the sun. Uh-huh. So you realize, well, it's, it's, it's all lined up with where the, where the source of light is. So what can you do with that? You see a phenomena, and then you, from that you come up with what's the possibilities here. So one of the possibilities is a solar tracker. And then that gets you into other possibilities of what you can do with polarized light detectors. So you design something that can detect the polarization of light, and there's a lot of other things you can do with it, but that's one of the things. So in that case, it's seeing a phenomenon, just being an observer. And I think that's really one of the most important parts of the in- my invention process is actually observing. It's either observing a problem and coming up with a solution or observing a phenomena and seeing what you could do with it. It's that kind of a thing. Strange question, but do you, do you solve problems in your sleep? Uh, do you come up with ideas in your sleep? I know some people do. Sometimes I do. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it does. I do that, but it's just not that often. More often, I solve it when I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I usually tend to feed my brain good things before I go to sleep. Like I'll sit down and read the science news to put me to sleep. So, <laughs> just throw some stuff in there. But uh... what's your advice then? I mean, obviously, you've talked about being observant. W- what other advice would you have for potential inventors out there? One of the things that uh, John Janning always points out to people... John Janning is who? uh, He's a local inventor, uh, worked for NCR, was involved pretty big on uh, solving some problems with the liquid crystal displays and a number of other things. He always points out that an invention is not an idea. It's an idea reduced to practice. So it helps if you know how to reduce ideas to practice. You've got to have some technical knowledge of how how to do things. In other words, you can come up with a solution in, in the sort of thought realm, but it's about making sure that that can be executed in the physical realm. You really don't have a solution until you've done that. What's the most frustrating thing about invention? And on the other hand, what is the most satisfying thing about it? Uh, probably the most frustrating thing is when you come up with a solution to the problem and other people haven't realized the problem yet. <laughs> Meaning you actually have sort of trouble marketing your product because they're not even aware there's a problem. Correct. This has happened to you. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> I love it. Inside the mind of an inventor. And uh, what, what is the, the uh, most rewarding thing? 
Oh, well, if, if and when somebody actually uses the invention and it solves their problem. The most rewarding thing is solving the problem. Inside the mind of inventor Stephen Fry this morning, if you'd like to read more about Mr. Fry, log on to our website, wyso.org, and click on the icon for the Dayton Business Journal. It's part of our joint effort to bring you innovation now.